A powerful storm system is set to impact the United States over the next few days, and this will bring significant severe weather, including numerous to widespread damaging winds, very large hail, and several tornadoes. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. We'll begin with what's happening across the country today, and right now we have a huge complex of showers and thunderstorms that has been rolling across the northern and central plains, and this actually brought a lot of damaging winds and hail yesterday to areas like Nebraska, and we even had a couple of land spouts just outside of North Platte. But overall, this storm system is now moving towards the Midwest, and this will lead to a potential for significant severe weather this afternoon and evening across the Midwest, Ohio Valley, and as well as the Great Lakes region. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days, and we'll begin with today, which is Thursday. The Storm Prediction Center has issued a level 3 out of 5 enhanced risk of severe weather for parts of the Midwest and the Ohio Valley and a slight risk even back into Kentucky and Southeast Missouri and even back over in Virginia. We have a slight risk of severe weather in place today. Our main concerns are going to be damaging winds, especially if you're back over in Southwest Michigan in Northern Indiana, where there will be a patch of storms later this evening that produces significant damaging winds as high as 85 to 90 miles per hour. So make sure that you're hatching down trampolines, protecting loose line items. And if you have any trash cans that can go flying, you might want to bring those in as well. Damaging winds though is possible and is the most likely if you're anywhere in the red or yellow shaded regions. Large to very large hail is also a big concern this afternoon as we are expecting a lot of supercells that initially fire up to produce the potential for hail as large as the size of softballs to so protect your vehicle across the Midwest, including areas like Chicago, Milwaukee, Wausau, Wisconsin, Kalamazoo, Michigan, and even over near Indianapolis, we could see hail as large as the size of softballs. And then tornadoes are a concern today. We are expecting the potential for maybe even a tornado outbreak across parts of the Midwest in the Ohio Valley. A large 2% tornado risk literally covers basically the entire Ohio Valley back into Texas and even into South Dakota and North Dakota. And we are expecting even a couple of strong tornadoes to be a possibility just outside of the Twin Cities, back through Milwaukee, even into Chicago, Northern Indiana, and Southwestern Michigan. So make sure that you have multiple ways to receive alerts and have a tornado action plan ready to go. We will be live streaming this event later today on this channel. So make sure you subscribe down below and click the bell icon so you're notified when we do go live. And then as we end to Friday, the risk of severe weather appears to be a lot more significant than what I think people are talking about right now. We could be talking about a full-fledged outbreak of severe weather across the Ohio Valley and the Mississippi River Valley as we go into Friday. Right now, the Storm Prediction Center does have a level 3 out of 5 enhanced risk of severe weather in place, which does include much of Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, and Missouri. Slight risk goes all the way back through Texas and into Pennsylvania, and a marginal threat from New Jersey back into Texas. Now, our main concern for Friday is expected to actually be large to very large hail. This should be our greatest threat across the board, and I wouldn't be surprised if the Storm Prediction Center does pull the trigger on a moderate risk of severe weather for parts of the lower Midwest and also the western Ohio Valley. And this is where we could be talking about the threat of very significant hail. We could be talking about hail as large as the size of softballs that falls out of the sky around St. Louis and even just north of Memphis during the afternoon hours on Friday. Damaging winds is also expected to be a significant threat. Here's the thing. A lot of the storms during the late morning and afternoon will be firing off right back over in this region, and those initial supercells should be mostly very large hail and also a tornado risk. But as we go later into the afternoon, this will all upscale into a line of thunderstorms, which could lead to significant damaging winds anywhere from 60 to 85 miles per hour from Tennessee back into Ohio. So anywhere in the hatched area, you definitely want to make sure that you're protecting any sort of loose line items. Don't let, you know, Trampolines go flying. If you're in a mobile home as well, make sure that you have an action plan ready to go in case you got to go to a sturdy structure. And our tornado threat across the board is elevated, especially in Indiana, Illinois, Ohio, Kentucky, and Missouri, anywhere from about Dayton, Ohio, back near Jonesboro in Arkansas, where there could be a strong tornado or two as we go into Friday. There's also an elevated tornado threat really anywhere from central Arkansas, just around Little Rock, back up towards Columbus in Ohio. So make sure that you have a tornado action plan ready to go. I do expect at least a few tornadoes. I do think though our tornado threat is actually not the main threat for Friday. I really do think damaging winds and hail will be dominating for our threat on Friday, but there could still be at least a few tornadoes with our environment, especially if we end up seeing discrete supercells across this region. So our tornado threat for today will almost be all day today actually. We do have a low tornado risk even throughout the late morning and early afternoon, mainly across parts of central and southern Minnesota, where there will be a couple storms that could produce an isolated tornado or two in and around the Twin Cities, and just 
to the west along the interstate and then eventually by around two to three o'clock that tornado threat will start to decrease a little bit which will eventually lead to a slightly more elevated tornado threat across wisconsin as we go into the middle and end of our afternoon time frame here right around three to four o'clock is when storms will start to fire and our stp values which is our significant tornado parameter values will be more elevated across this region which indicates that we have a lot of wind shear in addition to plenty of instability here across wisconsin another area that we need to keep a close eye on is right around five to six o'clock right around chicago and even back through indianapolis and eastern illinois there is a potential for a strong tornado or two if storms fire which i am leaning towards storms firing in this region we've had some question marks whether there be a cap in place doesn't really appear as if that is going to be much of a problem right around six to seven o'clock or so so be prepared at least for some large hail damaging winds and an isolated strong tornado if you are in this region and then by around seven to eight o'clock our tornado threat will be decreasing across wisconsin the only tornado threat mainly near green bay right around nine to ten o'clock and then we also could have a more elevated tornado threat in northwest ohio southern michigan and northeast indiana right around nine to ten o'clock and then by around about midnight or so our tornado threat is rapidly decreasing across the ohio valley and great lakes region so here's the timing for today this one looks like right about now we got some showers and thunderstorms just outside of minneapolis these are weakening mainly just isolated hail and wind as they go into the twin cities around mid-morning by around lunchtime we'll have some more storms firing up here across minnesota these will be mainly moving to the northeast and north where there will be a potential for an isolated tornado or two but mainly a damaging wind and hail risk by around two to three o'clock that is when our supercells will start to fire up across western wisconsin any of these are mostly going to be wind and hail producers i think but if any storms can stay more discreet the tornado threat would be much more elevated and we definitely start to see that with the h triple r model right around six o'clock there's a couple of discrete supercells that try to fire out in front of this line of storms and in that case we'd be talking about a much more significant tornado threat that would be materializing but again it is going to be somewhat conditional i do think the greatest tornado threat today will likely be in this region just to the north and west there milwaukee and then another one that's a bit more conditional just to the south of chicago in eastern illinois uh, northern indiana and as well as southwest michigan just outside of kalamazoo and then by seven o'clock if the cap is overcome across the midwest we could see a bunch of storms fire up right around chicago back into central illinois and northwestern indiana where significant hail damaging winds and a few tornadoes would all be a possibility it's not a slam dunk but if storms do fire off it definitely could get very dicey in and around the chicago area right around six seven to eight o'clock this evening by around eight to nine o'clock storms are moving right across the great lakes and then we'll still be talking about some significant severe weather moving into northern indiana and southwestern michigan just outside of kalamazoo by 10 to 11 o'clock that area of storm activity moves into areas like detroit and also northwest ohio where damaging winds will continue in a low tornado risk before eventually by around midnight or so our severe weather threat is near zero across the ohio valley and then heading into friday our risk of severe weather is expected to be elevated across the ohio valley and the mid mississippi river valley these are your significant tornado parameter values as we go towards lunchtime on friday and these are honestly really high for it only being about 12 to 1 o'clock we even have some values that are nearly maxed out back over in southeast missouri and southern illinois which could lead to multiple strong tornadoes just in this region but it's going to depend a lot on our storm mode and if we have any storms during the morning if we have any storms during the morning that could definitely hinder the chances of storms even firing in this region in the afternoon the other thing to keep in mind is if we have discrete supercells this environment is going to be used up and we will likely see multiple tornadoes as we go into friday across the lower midwest in the ohio valley and these values even get higher by three to four o'clock we are talking about very high tornado parameter values across the board could easily see a few significant tornadoes across this region and the values are pretty high pretty much everywhere but again it's going to depend really more on where our discrete supercells fire off which i think the bulk of them will be in this region by around five six and seven o'clock in the evening so definitely make sure that you're staying weather aware in addition to that the instability is going to be quite unbelievable here as we go into friday across this entire region we will have as much instability as 5,000 joules per kilogram which for reference most severe weather events we only need like one to two thousand at most for a lot of these severe weather outbreaks to take place so we are going to have an absurd amount of instability which means the atmosphere is very unstable which should lead to a bunch of severe storms and also our lapse rates which is the temperature that our atmosphere is decreasing as we go aloft is very steep which means that we should be talking about a lot of large hail storms especially with the initial supercells that fire across the mid mississippi river valley and the ohio valley so here's the timing as we go into friday morning we will have a couple of storms out there during the morning mainly across kentucky and tennessee these should be mainly wind and hail producers there's a very low chance of an isolated tornado during the overnight hours so to stay weather aware but i do think the tornado risk is very 
blow across this region. Eventually, by around 7 a.m. in the morning, that area of storms will continue to move across Kentucky and Tennessee with isolated damaging winds continuing. And then right around lunchtime, the HRRR starts to show a few supercells firing off just to the south of St. Louis and even into northern Arkansas. The initial concern, again, will be very large hail and a tornado or two. Damaging winds will start to become the primary concern as we head later into the afternoon hours. But notice how many storms we have out here. Again, we got several supercells that are out here across the board, and all of these are going to be in favorable environments for tornadoes, which, again, strong tornadoes are also a possibility. So by around 4 to 5 o'clock, this will likely end up being around the peak of our threat of severe weather for all hazards, anywhere from central Indiana back towards Memphis, Tennessee. Eventually, by 6 o'clock, we still got a bunch of supercells out there. We'll eventually start to see a line of thunderstorms form, and this should end up producing a significant wind threat as that moves across Kentucky, southern Indiana, and as well southwest Ohio. And then by around 7 o'clock, this line will continue to push east, and then several discrete supercells will be out there anywhere from around Texarkana, Texas, all the way back into central Tennessee. Obviously, this is a pretty scary looking setup here around 7 o'clock across Tennessee. We got two discrete supercells that the HRRR is currently projecting. Again, that does not mean this is definitely going to happen, but if something like this were to happen, we would definitely be talking about a significant hail, wind threat, and even a potential for strong tornadoes. So we definitely have to watch uh, tomorrow very closely here across the Ohio Valley and the Tennessee Valley. We will likely have a more detailed forecast in terms of the timing as we go later into the evening in tomorrow's video. If we do not have a video tomorrow, though, we will at the minimum have social media posts on Twitter and Facebook at Max Velocity WX, and we'll likely be talking about on our live stream later today with our severe weather coverage for the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. And you can tune in later today. Should be starting sometime during the middle of the afternoon. Now, unfortunately, we have severe weather ahead both today, tomorrow, and Saturday, but we are going to have another storm system as we go into the weekend that'll be moving right over the Rocky Mountains. This is what it looks like as we go into Sunday. A really deepening trough will be right over the Rocky Mountains, and this is going to help to mix a lot of warm and cold air and will lead to the potential for significant severe weather, mainly across the central and southern plains on Sunday. And then by Monday, we are talking about another potential for a severe weather outbreak as a very strong southwesterly flow will be in place across much of the central and southern plains. And right now, this looks like a pretty classic setup for a severe weather outbreak, either on Monday or Tuesday across the central and southern plains. And then by Wednesday, this low pressure system should weaken somewhat as it moves across the Ohio Valley, but could still bring some severe weather on Wednesday to parts of the Midwest, Ohio Valley and Southeast. And then I do think by the tail end of the week and into the weekend, we will likely continue to stay active, but we'll not be talking about major tornado outbreaks, I don't think, sometime around the end of May. But I do think we'll start to see a jet stream pattern that'll actually favor mesoscale convective systems, which means lines of thunderstorms. And that'll probably be pretty common for the last week of May. So this is what the future radar looks like for the next few days. As we go into Friday and Saturday, this low pressure system will still be in the Midwest, but a lot of our severe weather on Friday will be across the Ohio Valley, back even into Texas. As we go into Saturday, that low pressure system weakens as it moves into Canada, but a little bit of spare rain will be left over across the Ohio Valley in the Northeast. On Saturday, there is a chance of a little bit of severe weather. That should be mainly across Texas, back to the Mississippi River Valley. I think mainly damaging winds and hail for Saturday, but I wouldn't rule out an isolated tornado or two. And then as we go into Sunday, that is when a low pressure system will move over the Rockies. And I do think there will be a potential for significant severe weather on Sunday, anywhere from the Dallas-Fort Worth area in North Texas, all the way back up towards Kansas City, and even near North Platte, Nebraska, where there will be a threat of damaging winds, hail, and tornadoes. And then on Monday, our storm system will once again refuel in the southern plains and should lead to more severe weather. Monday is a little bit of a question mark. There could be a cap in place, which if we have a cap, which means a temperature inversion that's basically embedded in our atmosphere, that could prevent storms from firing. And if that ends up happening, the severe weather threat would be naturally lower across the Great Plains. And then on Tuesday, the GFS model is still bullish on another significant severe weather event occurring somewhere, either in the Ohio Valley, Midwest, or in the Mississippi River Valley, and then by Wednesday and Thursday, that storm system moves towards the East Coast where it'll weaken, and then by the weekend, I think things will at least be a little bit quieter, but I do think we'll continue to see some mesoscale days, which means some storms will still be possible, and they could still be severe, but they'll be pretty sporadic across the board, nothing as organized by the end of this month. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. Also, make sure to click the bell icon so you're notified, as we will be live later today with severe weather outbreak coverage across the Midwest west in the ohio valley lots of storm chasers cameras and a lot more we'll keep you posted with the latest subscribe and we'll see you guys all again in the stream which will be later today